Hiya, and welcome back to Password. The game that teaches us that... Dave just... Never gets a chance to rest. He just never gets a chance to. Like, he just never, ever, ever, ever gets a chance to. Anyways, let's just hop right in. The pale green glow led us forward and we entered the lab together. And the moment we did, I almost ran right into Oswin looking thoroughly unimpressed. He looked to Roswell, and Roswell looked right back. Hiya. I looked between them, unsure of who was meant to talk first. To what do I owe the pleasure? Did Benson send you? No, he didn't. Roswell just assumed you'd be down the passageway. Did he now? I was right, wasn't I? Well, you found me. What do you want? Dave and I have been thinking about these instances the vault has been showing him, specifically his time about when he saw me dead in the museum. Ah, uh, yes. If memory serves me correctly, the password for that was... Discover, I believe? That's right, uh, I think it was in a book. This sounds familiar enough to me. See, here's the thing. Everyone else has an alibi for where they were at that day, at least everyone I've asked. Oh? This is news to me. It does beg the question. As one of the last people I need to ask, where were you on that day? I looked to Oz when catching him glancing at me quickly before returning his attention to Roswell. Does it matter? Well, I guess if you were going to say that you were in the museum, it, that might look pretty bad. Exactly. But if anything, Oswin looked completely unaffected by the implication. Well, I wasn't. But that's a lie! Prove it, boy! Uh, can you prove it, Roswell? Roswell clenched his jaw, grumbling. Furthermore, you'll remember that you were also weren't in the museum. You were instead wandering into the woods. So if I just so happened to enter the museum that night, I'd be free to do so like everyone el like anyone else. Is there really no other evidence we have? Nothing to kind of just prove it one way or the other? We might. I have a theory that could potentially hold water, just depending on Oswin's alibi. Oswin huffed loudly through his nose, rolling his eyes. So to that end, I'm going to request your whole alibi for the day anyway. And if I refuse? You don't have any right knowing what I did that day, nor is there any guarantee that I even remember. Oswin, do you remember, though? Did you... Could you have, uh... Killed Roswell? Right. There's every likelihood I could have, and it wouldn't have been very hard either. He gestured to the cabinet off to the side with a wave of his hand as he continued. I have access to a great many things. Poisons, cures, various other chemicals and samples I could do in a pinch if I wanted to mask a cause of death as one thing or another. It's not all that hard, although the big missing factor in all this would be motive. Motive? Is there any reason you'd want to kill Roswell then? Like, any at all? Oswin turned away from me to look at Roswell. His piercing gaze seemingly making Roswell falter, if just enough to make him take a step back. That's... no. I don't think I have any reasons to kill Roswell. Not unless he gave me one. So, we don't have any motive, or potential alibi, or anything, really. Well, no in the interest of playing fair. I will say that I was in the study, so yes, my earlier comment was a lie. You were? I was in there when you and Dave were looking into things. A good thing that I kept myself hidden and quiet in there for as long as I did. I didn't particularly want anyone knowing I was in the house. But why, if you'd popped out and said hello, would that have been so bad? I suppose we'll never know. All I can say is it's one of the few times I'm thankful that that entry can be operated from both sides. But that would mean... Am I under suspicion for a murder that didn't occur? I don't know. If there's no reason you have to kill Roswell, then I guess not. Excellent. Now, if we're asking each other about other things... Hang on, I'm going to be right back. I will be right back. And I'm back. Excellent. Now, if we're talking about other things, I would like to narrow down who could have stolen what's missing from my laboratory. What exactly is missing? Did you want the itemized list or just a general overview? I mean, if we find what's missing, then, well, let's see, a few choice poisons. Or at least I can imagine the only way you'd use what was taken as his poison. Plus a pneumatic injector, presumably to inject what else was stolen into some unfortunate person. I gave Oswin a look, thinking back to nearly a week ago when he got me from behind. Except saline solution, that is. But please don't go self-dosing. I wouldn't want anything. I wouldn't want something to go wrong. I got the feeling he knew where my mind was at, and I grumbled when he turned to Roswell once more. Ah, uh, yes, and I suppose for full transparency, I noticed these things missing a few days after you all arrived. So I'm fairly confident the culprit could be among your number. A reasonable conclusion, Roswell? 
Uh, right? Seems logical to me. Good. The moments after he said that, I spent looking between Roswell and Oswin, wondering if either of them were going to speak first. So... Who does that narrow it down to? Oh, if you wanted me to make an accusation, then the most likely would be Roswell. What? Consider the following. We can narrow down the culprit to those that arrived around the same time they went missing. Which brings our suspect list down to you, Dave, Dean, Sal, Haas, Orlando, and Tyson. Makes sense so far, but this isn't proof. True, but there is something else to consider. When Dave did his venture into the woods, he found something interesting that he reported to me about. Okay, hiya. Something that sounded very much like what was missing from the lab. I think I remember that, yeah, but why is that important? Outside of yourself, who else went into the woods? I looked to Roswell, who had his eyes locked on Oswin. That's still circumstantial. Ah, uh, yes, of course. What we really would need is something s damning such as a means to get in here, no? So I ask you, Dave, how did you find yourself in the lab today? We took the passage in the basement. And were you the one that opened said passage, or was it Roswell? Slowly, I looked back to Roswell uneasy. Well? Again, circumstantial. If your evidence is that you need someone to go out into the woods and appear after we arrived and have access to the lab, can you really rule out Benson? Pardon? Benson has access, opportunity, and a lot of time we didn't know where... A lot of the time we didn't know where he was. I'm fairly certain I have noticed Benson missing for that long. And again, we have to consider the motive. Would Benson have a motive for stealing something from the lab? What I... Oswin grumbled, jaw clenched. As of now, I don't know. What about if it was someone else? Who? The rabbit in the woods, could he have gotten in? While we don't know when he arrived on the mountain, or even how he got on the mountain in the first place, have faith I'd know if someone was wandering around the house that wasn't meant to be here. I suppose that makes sense. Around that time, you're still hidden away, so if you had that whole section of the house to yourself, no doubt they'd have run into you in this room. Or if not me, Benson. He is being a girl boss right now because Gaslight Gatekeep Girl Boss. Just trust that if someone wasn't meant to be in the house, we would have done something about it. Right. Okay. Now, are we done? I I suppose so. Excellent. Now if you don't mind, I was in the middle of something I would very much like to get like very much like my privacy back. Not to mention I've misplaced a certain rat that should be accounted for. Alright, well, come on, Roswell. Right, yeah, okay. The two of us headed out of the lab with Oswin watching us disappear into the darkness. When we were back in the basement, I closed the passage behind us and turned to Roswell. I wasn't sure what to say or what to really think, but it was Roswell who spoke first. Before you say anything, I didn't take anything from the lab. Okay. But I'm positive that if Oswin was in the study while we were in the museum, he'd have... He'd have... He had had to been a... He'd have had to have been our culprit. A fuck. But he said that he would have just used stuff from the lab to kill you, right? Well, yes, but if he was in the study and needed to kill me then and there, he might have had something... He might have had to make do with something else. He really isn't. If you gave him a reason to kill you, at least. Roswell nodded slowly, brow furrowed. But who knows what that reason would have been. The murder never happened and the setup never happened either. Whatever could have happened... Whatever could have been now just is beyond us. Dave is just... Yeah, but Dave isn't smart. He... He doesn't have school smarts. Or street smarts. But he has a big heart. And that's all that matters. He has a big heart. It's, it's all that matters with him. Because he is too trusting like what they say about him. And yeah, not that smart. If you think I'm talking about something else, just go look at a... Just go look in the Discord server and you'll see that that's not what I'm talking about. It's beyond us. Right, well, now what do we do? Anything you want to do? I think... Hmm. I want to see if there's a way to deal with this password thing. Ah, right. It, it, it was a werewolf problem, right? Poor Yeen Brain is running on beans. It's not even running on that anymore. The Yeen Brain is running on... 
trauma, depression, and, okay, trauma, depression, and pretty bad suicidal thoughts. That's, that's what's running, that's what's powering his entire brain. All right, that, it was a werewolf problem, right? I guess, I don't know. Either way, Tyson's been on edge yesterday and today, so maybe that has something to do with it. Hopefully it's enough to go off. If the deadline is tomorrow, then there's not a whole lot of time to figure it out. Did you want any help, or...? Unless you can magically figure out what's setting him off, and it magically coincides with why he's potentially going to kill Orlando. I don't know how you can. Well, let's see. How about you tackle his bedroom and I'll go search the gym? I'd say we should investigate together, but I'd rather not be put in a position where I'm caught in Tyson's room. I would neither, but I guess if he sees me as his brother, that's probably going to save me. Let his love for you be your shield, or, well, that's something Haas might say. My spin on it would be, take what concessions you can get, especially now. I think I liked the love angle better. Well, Tyson probably does love you if he's willing to out you as his brother in front of all of us. Just be careful all the same, though. And you'll tackle the gym? Shouldn't take me too long, but when you're done in Tyson's room, let's say we meet in the conservatory. I'll bring some snacks up on my way there and meet you when we're done. Sure, that should work, yeah. And so we split off, Ross while heading to the gym and me upstairs to go check out Tyson's room. If we already knew when the full moon was, all we had left to find was the cause and he was as good as saved. Or so I hoped. Okay, Thanatos, bitch. Cause he's a bitch, he's a bitch. He's a tiny bitch, he's a tiny bitch. I made my way to the conservatory, my mind swimming with everything I'd learned from the day. Closing the door behind me, I wandered over to the window and peered down at the forest beyond. It seemed fine from up here, less scary but no more inviting than what it was to me now. Yeah. A chill ran down my spine as I kicked back and decided to wait for Roswell to show up. Just thinking about it made me feel worried. How much time did he have left? Was he worried he wasn't making the most of it? How do you even go about asking these questions of someone about to die? The minutes ticked by as I waited, wondering and reflecting on how good of bad of a friend I had been to him. If anything, it almost felt like I'd failed without even knowing it. Uh, Dave? Are you okay? Roswell closed the door behind him, a bunch of snacks already laid out on a coffee table in the room. A fresh cup of coffee was in his hand, and I sat up to wipe my eyes. Yeah, I'm good. Thanatos when he is a gaslighting bitch. Gaslighting Thana bitch. Right? Yeah, I'm good. Are you sure? You didn't respond when I dropped these snacks off the first time. You just kept staring at the ceiling. Sorry, just stuff on my mind. Right, I guess I can understand why. Did the investigation go well, at least? He wandered over and handed me my coffee, and I drank it from the... And I drank from it fast enough to almost burn my mouth. I don't think Tyson's going to be a problem anymore. I have a plan, at least. That's good. I just hope it's enough. You think it might not be? What did you find in his room? So, there was something under his bed, just... Emitting the sound. What thing? It doesn't matter. All I can figure out, though, is that this thing was likely giving him headaches and driving him nuts in his sleep. Then waking up and just... Well, you saw him this morning. So a sound trap? That's... Hmm. You know something about it? Well, given Nox can hear things on a higher frequency than we can, I guess if the pitch is high enough, you could be driven insane while no one else hears anything. Basically like a dog whistle, but worse? Right, well, I've dealt with it. I just need to talk to Tyson to see if he's okay and we should be in the clear. You dealt with it? Did you break what was causing the noise, or...? Not exactly, but I made sure it wouldn't be a problem if my plan works. And that plan is...? Oh, I'll just let him sleep in my room. You know, like a sleepover. Roswell was giving me a look, but didn't say anything as he tore into a bag of candy. Maybe for a night, I don't know. I'll talk, and I'll talk to him about it later. Well, I guess that works, but if he's in your bed, did you want to share mine? Not as if I take up too much room. Maybe that's a later problem to deal with. Are the others immediate problems to deal with, then? I looked off to the side, thinking it through. Just you dying, right? Right. I guess just why did you keep it from us? No one else knows, right? What would you do if you were dying, Dave? Would you openly tell everyone you knew that you didn't have long left and then have them pity you or fawn over you in your last moments? Well, no, I guess not, but I couldn't just not tell them. That was my plan. Less for everyone to worry about than just coddle me and like I was sick and injured. But you are sick. 
Sure, but you didn't know just how bad it was until I told you. Now I have to worry about, like, if every interaction we're going to have now is just because you're taking pity on me. Is that why you told me to wait to answer your question? Basically. Last thing I want is you to agree just because you pity me. Wouldn't be right. If you wanted to be together for what little time we may have together and given what circumstances we find ourselves in. He left the comment there, shoving the piece of candy into his mouth and sitting back in, the, in his chair, staring at the ceiling. Then, why did you tell me? Given our circumstances, it just felt right to clue you in. And the others, are you going to tell them? In a couple days, sure. Just you first. Okay. Dave, I need to ask something else incredibly selfish. What? Is it something bad? Mmm. I want you to promise me something. Something that is going to sound bad, but I promise that I've thought this through. I'm not going to like this, am I? You're not, no, but I have to ask anyway. He breathed in deep and huffed out through his nose, looking me in the eye. Promise me that if there comes a time if someone has to die, let it be me. I can't promise that. That's crazy. It's the only logical call, Dave. It's choice between me and Orlando, for instance. I'm already fated to die anyway, so don't cut Orlando's life short only to lose me too. But what if I want to save you both? Then obviously do that if you can without endangering yourself, but just don't make the dumb choice and save me. It's not a dumb choice to want to save you, Roswell. And I'm flattered you'd say that. But just realistically speaking, that might just be how it has to go. Minimize the loss of life in the worst case scenario. What if I don't promise that? That's just, I don't know, that's a lot to ask. I'm not going to force you, just at least consider from that angle. If someone has to die, let it be me. His statement faded into silence while I drank from my coffee. I couldn't look at him. It didn't feel right to promise that, even if logically it made the most sense. But something about how clinical he treated his own life just felt wrong. As if it didn't matter that he'd given up even if his tone didn't imply that at all. Did you have any other questions? Does it hurt? No, for the most part it's just something that comes up every now and again with aches, but I'm used to it. Catching a cold in the woods wasn't good for me, though. And you will tell the others, right? Sooner rather than later, yes. Okay, then what do I do now? I don't understand. You're dying and there's nothing I can do to help with that. Now, now, not now anyway. I'm not a doctor. I can't magically heal you and ensure you survive. So just what am I meant to do? There isn't anything you can do, Dave. You just let it happen. You be sad and you continue living hopefully happier after you've had time to cry. But that's so, it's just like waiting for Christmas to come, but the present is your friend dying. That's just a bad Christmas. I'm sorry, Dave. There really isn't anything you can do. It's a sad thing that's happening, yes, so you cry, you allow yourself to feel sad, and enjoy what time we have left. Assuming we survive with everything going on. You will survive. You can't be sure about that. Then just promise me you'll try, if not for me, for your friends, your family, any reason you can muster on to keep living. Just don't give up. Is that why you're not sad about dying? You haven't given up? It's a combination of things. On one hand, being hopeful doesn't get me anywhere, but moping around being sad and waiting for it to happen isn't good either. I whined and sat back, clinging to my mug and staring at the ceiling. Sorry, we, we don't have to talk about it anymore if you don't want to. It's okay, just... I'm gonna need some time to process all of this is all. Did you want me to go so you can figure it out without me being just around? Always watching. Ah! No, please stay. I think you would just... Make it worse. For the rest of the afternoon, we just quietly ate our snacks while I thought things over. Roswell settled in with a book, and even if quietly, we enjoyed each other's company. Eventually, though, it was time for dinner. By that time, I'd processed it somewhat to push to the back of my mind, even if it still weighed heavily on me as we made our way downstairs. Oh, I fucking love the bacon. Hi, tall bacon. Hi, bitch. Hi, Alfred. Hi, Woof Woof. I'd gone by my room first to pick up some things and then had them bundled up as I eased my way into Roswell's room. Oh! Is it still fine for me to share your bed, all things considered? I wouldn't be a very good friend if I offered something and then re- Then... I don't know how to pronounce that. Self-voicing enabled. Roswell. I wouldn't be a very good friend if I offered something and then reneged on Always it. watching. Uh, Self-voicing- Sure, but you have the right to change your mind. It's honestly fine. If anything, this is just yet another logical choice for how to deal with what's going on. 
Does it always have to be logical? Can it just be... I don't know. What feels right? He says it can't be both. Just... Ugh, I don't know, Roswell. Is it fine if I take a shower, though? But of course. I'm gonna just lay in bed and read a book until you're done. I half watched as Roswell got into bed as I wandered into the bathroom. It wasn't a long shower, just enough to properly wash down and make sure I was rinsed in the off chance I'd started to accumulate any sort of smell from the day. Roswell, want me to hit the light? Uh, sure. I waited until he had put his book away before hitting the light and wandered over to the bed, laying down next to him. Or wandering over to the bed. Fuck. We lay like that in silence, staring at the ceiling before I felt him take my hand in his. It's time to drink water. 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 I also do that sometimes, but no. At first, I just squeezed back, but eventually I rolled over and hugged him tight. Tighter than I probably should have, but he didn't fight it off. I lay there with him in my arms, listening to him fall to sleep. And soon after, I did too. This is so heartbreaking. Hi, bitch. Oh, fuck. Rubbing my head, it dawned on me. I had to talk things out with Dean today, just talk and figure out things between us. This prospect of it made my stomach flip and churn slightly, not really sure how things were going to go. With a sigh, I looked out over the front lawn and breathed in deep again through my nose. Oh, God. If I'd caught his eye, I'd flash him a smile back before turning back to the pancakes, racked with guilt. At some point today, we need to talk about us and if a relationship was happening or what exactly it was we had. Wondered if now was a good time or if it was best to just let it lay until after we'd woken up a bit more. At the very least, had food in our stomachs. Oh, God! This is not going to go well. This is not going to end well. Oh, fuck. Just need to talk to Dean about something serious. Oh, brother, not this conversation! You know about it? If it's what I'm thinking of, then yeah, I know all about it. Does it go well? About as well as you can expect from what I remember of it, or what I remembered being told of it anyway. Then, any advice? Nope, I really don't care how it goes either. Well, thanks. Doesn't end up with a password in the vault, so none of my business. Okay, bitch. Oh, but uh, before you go, have you seen Dean? Dean? Why do you want to talk to Dean? Just, there's something I need to talk to him about. Is this because of what I asked you yesterday? A little, yeah. Well, maybe not just a little, but it's... yeah. I'm sorry to have asked that of you, but, well, you know how it is. I know, all the same. I can't just not have that talk with Dean either, you know? No pressure either way on my end, but yes, I agree. Should talk to Dean about it regardless of what you decide for me. Right. <laughs> it's going to be awkward. I don't like awkward. He looked me over instead of going into whatever it was he was about to say and sat down in some potting soil. Something's on your mind. Man, a little or a lot. Yeah, it's just, it's stuff. Want to talk about it? Yeah, I both want and need to talk about it. Stuff's just... I sat down awkwardly next to Dean and started messing with my hands, not sure of how to start. Stuff's just... what? Complicated? I think I'm going to need more to go off than just that, Dave. What's wrong? I don't know how to say it, Dean. It's... it's hard. That bad? It's not about it being good or bad, just... I don't know. Well, if it makes it easier, I have something in the works that you might like. What's that? Just a little private time for the both of us. Thought... Of... Thought it about time that we did something nice. What do you mean? A date? Well, more like a dinner, but given everything that's been happening late, I figured it might be something to cheer you up. Ah! 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 It's time to go bye-byes! The moment he'd said it, my heart sank. I felt guilty, a little ashamed and nauseous all at once. From the corner of my eye, I could see Dean's eyes shoot open in concern, but he stayed quiet. Great! That doesn't look like the face of someone who's glad to hear that. Did I do something wrong? No. Then what's wrong? What happened? Dean, I... I don't think going on a date is a good idea anymore. 
Well, shucks. I guess the time was just that poor, huh? Not just tonight. I mean, at all. What? Conflicts between non antagonists. Ugh. His voice trailed off and he leaned back away from me. I don't. I don't think we should go on a date. Did I say something wrong? It's not that. Did something happen? Not really, just everything going on with people. Just seeing people dying and those people in the woods and. bringing up dad. But, Dean, I just, I, I don't know. So it's past year, were we? I don't know. Were we? I don't know. I just thought, I just thought. Uh, I swear to God, if he starts crying, I'm going to start feeling bad. He slumped, staring off in a daze. Dean, I'm sorry. I just, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I think, I don't know. I didn't mean for it to be this way. I guess I just. I looked over to Dean and his eyes were wild, staring at me. I thought I was going to be sick or that he was going to say or do something to me, but it never came. All this time! Please don't hit me, I'm sorry! Already I was flinching as I saw the vague motion of him rearing back. The next sound I heard was a dull thud of some something hitting soft nearby. Don't. Just. Don't. Okay. I can't believe this, I can't- I won't. Dean, I... Say it. Say what? Say it to my face that you're not interested anymore. But... Please, I need to hear it. Dean, I... This is hurting my heart. And I don't like it. I'd never seen him so angry. Maybe it wasn't anger, but just hurt. I don't want to date you anymore. I'm not interested. He flinched, mouth agape, but stayed quiet. His hands went to his chest. Damage. And that's when his eyes pulled away from mine, groaning softly to himself. Damn it! Dave. Yeah? Get out. Please. Ooh, that hurt. His breathing was ragged and I reached out to him, but all that got me was his free hand batting mine away. Please. I got up shakily, stumbling towards the door. As I reached it, I looked behind me to where Dean still sat, deflated with his hands in it, with his face in his hands. Ah, my heart. It had been the first time I'd ever said that I'd ever had to say that to someone and it hurt. It made me feel sick. Somewhere deep down, I knew that I did what needed to be done. And I left. In the days I wandered back inside, my face felt numb, my mouth drooped at the corners, and I just didn't know how I was meant to be feeling. Sadness, for sure. Guilt was a solid maybe. This mix of emotions was new, but just as unpleasant, and I needed something to make it stop. I felt sick, and the cramping in my stomach made me pause. Grabbing onto the railing of the stairs before I could take more than the first step up, I didn't even know where I was planning on going, but I ended up sitting down all the same. With my face buried in my hands, I just sobbed. No tears, just whining out quietly as I let my emotions run free and vent in the only way I could manage. It was exhausting all the same, though. I wondered if I should go get Sal or talk to Orlando about what had happened, but part of me didn't want to talk much at all, given the last conversation upset someone that much. This hurts. Roswell sat down quietly beside me. I didn't even notice him approach, and I couldn't say from which direction he'd appeared from. He stayed quiet, carefully placing a hand on my back and resting it there to the point where I could barely feel it at all. But after long enough, he broke the silence between us. Are you okay? No. Alright. The rubbing on my back started in slow circles, and to his credit, it made me feel a little better, but not enough to magically make the problem go away. Did you want to talk about what had happened? You know about it already? I could make maybe an educated guess. No, no, I just saw you like this and it felt serious. It is what? I don't know. Did you want me to leave you alone or can I keep you company? Please stay. I don't really know how I'm feeling right now, but I feel bad. 
bad? Why bad? I think I just broke up with Dean or, like, ended whatever thing we might have had was. He nodded slowly, dipping his gaze. When he offered nothing in reply, I continued. He didn't take it well. There was yelling, and I thought I might have gotten punched, but he wanted to hear it as bluntly as possible. I don't know if that's better or worse, really. It's hard to say. I could imagine why you'd want to be told in simple terms what's happening. Yeah. When, when I was told about how long I've got left, they were very clear about what was going to happen, that I was dying and so on. I quickly looked around to see if anyone else was within earshot, but Roswell didn't seem to care. For things like that, I can imagine why eliminating any room for doubt is important. Telling someone you don't want to date someone isn't as important as that, though, is it? You tell me. From how I found you, it seems like it was weighty enough that you were affected in a big way. But that's different! Different how? He shook his head, standing up and skipping down to stand on the floor in front of me. Both of them are life-shaking events. Maybe at different points on the same scale, but the same scale nonetheless. Ah, damn it. I slumped, pulling my gaze away. I guess so. I just feel gross for doing that to someone. Would you rather not rather not say anything to Dean if you could go back and do it over? Well, that's not a good option either. How's that fair? Exactly my point. It might hurt now, but it's for the best you said something now as opposed to waiting. Take it from someone who can't, who really can't afford to wait. I got up and shoved my hands in my pockets, looking him over. You know, I'm still a little, um, shaken after what you told me yesterday. Now you're being so casual, bring it up, I just, that's actually happening, isn't it? Everyone dies, Dave. That's not what I meant, and you know it. Well, what's the alternative? You know now, and there's no point in just pretending we didn't talk about it. Sure, but just, I don't like the thought of you just... He cut me off by putting a hand on my arm. Would you rather I not bring it up? A little, yeah. Okay, sorry. No, like, I get it, but can we talk about something else right now? I'm already feeling kind of down. Right, yeah, okay. What were you up to now, anyway? Nothing, really. I was kind of bored and just noticed you sitting here. No one else is doing anything? Well, I think Sal is upstairs chatting with Haas about something Orlando, I'd imagine, is in the kitchen, and we know where Dean is. And Tyson? Haven't seen him since breakfast. Okay, well, did you want to do something? Sure, any ideas? Not really. I kind of feel like drawing a little, but I don't have any of my stuff. Just a pen in my notebook. That's not good enough? I guess it'd be fine. It's not really something we can do together, though. I'd be happy just reading a book while you drew. I don't think we necessarily need to be doing the same activity to enjoy each other's company, but... Unless you wanted to watch a movie? But you're going to be thinking about other thi about things even during the movie, aren't you? I'd say it's better to let what's in your head out onto the paper, even if it's just scribbling. You're probably right. I watched as Roswell started back up the stairs, stopping halfway up before looking back at me and gesturing me to follow. After stopping off in my room and then again at Roswell's, we entered the conservatory and got ourselves comfortable. Roswell sat by the window with the book and I'd opened my notebook to a fresh page after skipping past all the notes I'd taken so far about the vault. Got something in mind for your drawing? Not really. I was just going to let it happen, I guess. I gulped hearing me say the words and remembering the same words echoing through my head. A chill went down my spine and I shuddered, unrestrained. Cold? Just shaking off a bad thought. About Dean? About death, I guess. Did you want to talk about it, or...? I, I don't know, maybe. Well, you just let me know. I could feel him watching me for a little bit before turning to his book and I started laying down lines. Scratchy and messy, I wasn't even sure what I was drawing until I had a face and found myself just drawing myself. Occasionally I'd look across to Roswell to see if he was watching, but he was just idly reading. What are you reading anyway? Did you really want to know? Is it a complicated book? Not explicitly, more implicitly, if that makes sense. No. Oh, uh, let's see. You know the story of Hansel and Gretel, right? Uh, frowning, I thought back to my childhood. It was an old story, so I just assumed everyone had known about it. Two kids, a forest, gingerbread house. Right, that's the version you'd expect to hear, right? That's not what's in the book you're reading, is it? I'm guessing. Roswell shook his head, setting the book down after making, after marking the page. This version is a bit strange. Pseudo-cannibalism in the occult. It's a very strange version just because of various symbolism. What kind of symbolism? The villain was a rabbit, typically associated with luck or sometimes the moon, I suppose. Not necessarily, uh, well... Eating people. Right? Like, uh... I suppose in this story, the idea that there's a parallel be between rabbits and magic from things like magicians and such makes sense. He shook his head, checking over the page again. It's just bizarre is all. I suppose. Why are you reading stories like that anyway? Just for the humor of it. We have a copy of this at home, but Mom was very, I don't know, jovial about how silly the framing of the whole thing was. 
Dad was very much the same, but I always had strange reading tastes anyway. They didn't get you normal books? Define normal. I don't know, like books for kids? I'll have you know that I loved reading the nonfiction books that Dad brought home. Or even just case summary documents. But why? I found them interesting. All the bad people being judged and being sent to prison and those that sneakily get away. Just interesting the world can work that way is all. That just sounds like bad people getting away, really. I suppose my views on right or wrong are admittedly a little skewed. You know why? Well, in what world is a child being diagnosed as terminally ill right? But it still happened. I nodded slowly, looking back to my notebook and feeling my whole body going slightly limp. Sorry. But you get what I mean, right? I do. It's just still hard to process. Even a story like that feels strange. Who writes a story like that anyway? Someone with a sick sense of humor, much in the same way our story is unfolding, right? What do you mean? Some would argue that this is evidence that God isn't benevolent or omnipotent. What? She did not marry your penis. Oh, 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 okay, alright. She didn't only marry your penis. Twister 1996. What? What? I also imagine Orlando would have opinions about the role of well, God plays games, too. Being there only to be slain and ousted from control. I didn't know you were religious, Roswell. Oh, I'm not. I'd much more believe in science than religion. No, I get that. I can tell, but like... That is one hell of a... That is one hell of a quote. Science and religion. So why are we talking about gods? I guess I'm looking at it in the sense that if this was all by some grand design by a higher power, they're a dick. I snorted as he frowned, but he looked thoughtful all the while. Which is why I'd much rather take control of my own fate where I can, right? And how do you do it? I guess it'd be my brand of bravery, perhaps. It also means that I get to decide what happens to me, and being on a timer for sure helps keep me moving forward. Yeah, but just tell me something. What? What keeps you moving forward even knowing that's going to happen? Like, don't get me wrong, I'm glad you're just... What I mean is, um... I think I understand. You're asking why I haven't just decided to spend all my free time on vacation or seeking the world or something. Right? Like, your dad is a lawyer, so you must have money, right? A bit presumptuous, isn't it? I guess, but like, look where we find ourselves, Roswell. Can you blame me given we're in a mansion? No, you're right on both counts, really. Both mom and dad earn a lot of money, but I guess the money side of things just wouldn't make me happy? He looked out the window, sighing. What's seeing the world going to do for me? Where would I even go? No amount of money can cure what I have either. So money in this instance is just kind of worthless. I got up and looked out the window with him, spotting him smiling to himself in his reflection. So I'd much rather just live a normal life. I feel like when the time comes, I'll be able to feel like I got the most out of it instead of just doing everything as a reminder that I'm on a shorter clock. Right, I get it. You don't sound convinced. Well, it's not that so much as I f just find it really unfair. That's because it's not. You don't understand. I mean all of it. You dying, us in danger, you being fine about it, dad dying. I breathed in deep and continued talking with my jaw clenched. Who is a re uh, Okay. I'll look into it. I'll look into that movie. Granted, I don't know if I'll watch it. I'm currently binging The Way of the House Husband, so like, yeah. Breathe in deep and continue talking with my jaw clench. It's not fair that I'm the one that gets the vault to work. It's not fair that someone decided that we had to be the ones targeted. It's not fair that the mafia exists. It's all just so unfair. That's life, isn't it? Or the very least life as I know it. But that just circles back around to doing what you can and taking control for yourself. But how? I'm just one guy, and if I'm being honest, I'm not all that special. Come on, Dave, you're very special. I don't mean like that. I just mean like... All these things seem bigger than what I'm able to deal with, even with a gun. A gun? You think a gun would help? It doesn't need to be a gun, really. Just anything that makes me feel like I could fight back or do something. There was a sigh of relief before Roswell chuckled slightly. You just want a tool to incite change. Thankfully, there are plenty, even in this mansion. There are? Well, consider the hidden parts of the mansion, for example. Who knows what lays in those places? You mean like the library? I mean like all of it. That said, there's a sword in the museum if you feel inclined to use something more medieval. He placed a hand on my shoulder and picked his book back up. I remember most of all, you're not alone in this. No matter what happens, or if the worst case scenario comes to pass, you're not alone. The worst case scenario. Again, sorry, maybe I should stop talking. No, it's okay, I wish there was something nicer to talk about, though. Well, what are you planning on doing after this month is up? After we got off the mountain, you mean. Right, what comes next for you? 
Well, everyone's leaving except for Dean from what I gather. Tyson might stick around, but he might not. So I don't really know. I think you should go to the beach. Why is that? Because you liked the beach? Chances are, if you were the one organizing this vacation, you'd have tried to get a beach house, we'd have spent the month there. That would have been nice, actually. Maybe I should. I can totally imagine you stocking up on some nice paint or markers or whatever and just drawing by the seaside to recover. You might need it, too. Plus therapy, probably. Right, and therapy. Wandering back over to my notebook, Roswell started flicking through his book again. I continued drawing, letting my mind wander over everything Roswell had said, but ultimately thinking about the beach. Time ticked on by as I filled my notebook with sketches of my friends, various doodles of us doing things or random shapes, at least until the ink in my pen ran out. Roswell seemed to have been amassing books, flicking through them with a frown as if looking for the answer to a question he'd realized was of vital importance. Every time I asked him how he was going with his books, he flashed me a smile and said it was going well, right before going back as if not having been interrupted in the first place. I'd retrieved another pen nearby by some miracle being left around and continued drawing, but a lot more distracted by how Ross was poring over the pages of his book. Dave? I was just staring into space and hadn't registered him addressing me at first, but I did a double take when he called my name again. Oh, what? I was just wanting to see if you were hungry, that's all. Maybe a little. Want to go get a snack and then watch a movie now? Aren't you worried that I'm going to be thinking about things while we watch it? From how you've been drawing the past few hours, you're going to be thinking things regardless of what we do. And I'm tired of reading at the very least. Oh, right, sorry. It's alright, I could use something sweet right about now anyway. Wander down together, heading through the foyer directly into the kitchen rather than go through the dining room. It's not that bad, Orlando. And, and those two? Really? Just... Orlando was going to say something else but noticed us standing there, finger on Sal's chest. Are we interrupting something? Not particularly. Just talking about Dane. We can leave if you want, we just came to get some snacks. It's fine, you can stay. We're not finished talking, Sal! Yes, we are. Rosalind had wandered over to the pantry and started rummaging for something to eat while Orlando and Sal started staring off against an... While Orlando and Sal stared off against one another. We're done. Because if you want to turn to Dean about things he's done, you had best do that with Dean and not me. Orlando went to say something but was cut off as Sal stepped forward, imposing his size. With that in mind, you'd best be respectful. My friend is hurting, and you dredging up mistakes he's made is only going to make things worse. If you want to talk to him about it, have some tact. Like Roswell said, we can leave if you want. No, it's, it's fine. I'm going to go talk to Dean. I mean it, Orlando. Now is not the time to be tearing into Dean, but if you must talk with him, he's in the greenhouse. Orlando scurried away, choosing to take the route through the dining room as to not walk past me and get out of there as soon as, as fast as possible. What was that about? Drama. You know how it is. Right, um... Just a common thread between Dean and Orlando that, well, Orlando takes issues with. Takes issue with, that's all. Sounds like a mess waiting to happen. Are you sure it's wise not to keep them apart given how readily Orlando was willing to bark at you? I believe. Assuming that Orlando can keep us cool enough to be rational, that it's best he and Dean talk things out now. Why now? Namely because it's about time. But also, with what you decided earlier with Dean, it means there's now a way for both of them to address certain grievances they have with their own positions. Sorry, I'm possibly phrasing this badly. You mean how with Dave out of the picture they can talk feelings and expectations? Wait, really? That's what he meant? I just assumed it was like whatever it was Orlando was talking to Sal about when we arrived. It's true. Dean was invested in Dave, as was Orlando. At least from what conversations I had with the pair of them. Although neither handled their emotions well. Don't tell them I said that, please. Huh. I don't think that's very wise to put them in the same room now of all times, then. Dean lashes out, but is mostly all bark. Orlando is the same. I imagine once they finish yelling at each other defensively, they'll both back down and be able to freely talk. And you're sure that's safe? I've known them both long enough that, yes, I believe so. Well, I guess they'd probably already be going at it by now, so the opportunity is missed, even if we wanted to intervene. Are you two just grabbing something to eat for dinner? Wait for a snack before we went to go watch a movie. Would you like to join us? Will that be alright? I feel like I should be on hand in case Dean and Orlando need someone to mediate. But they're adults. They can cope without me for a movie's length of time. Great! <sighs> uh, it's going to be so awkward next time we see Dean! It is going to be so fucking awkward! Sal and Roswell went back to raiding the pantry and in hushed voices discussed snacks. I just stood back as watched as they amassed things in their arms and gave me a confident nod once they were done. I was honestly surprised by how well the stock of the pantry was, given we'd, we'd been cut off from the world for a bit now. Maybe prior to our arrival, they just stocked up and we were safe, still safe as far as food. Yeah. Yay! It was a worry that maybe we'd run out, but maybe something to bring up later rather than sour the mood, given how excited Sal and Ross will look for movies and snacks. 
You guys look excited for the movie way more than I am, than what I am anyway. Admittedly, it's been a while since we've done something nice in a group. Last time I was playing cards, wasn't it? No, that can't be right, can it? I guess we've all been busy, but still. Well, we're doing something now at least, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking right. It's already dragging beanbags into position when Sal came to help, grabbing an extra one presumably for Roswell. So have you been, Sal, like, in general? Fight, I suppose. Beyond all the things everyone's tackling together, I can't complain. Really? Admittedly, I like to go and use the pool again when it's safer, but otherwise it's for sure a unique vacation. Sorry. Is it your fault that all this has happened? Unless it is, I don't think you should be apologizing. He clapped Roswell on the shoulder, and Roswell buckled under the motion to fall into a beanbag, still cradling his snacks. What did you want to watch? Oh, um, I'm happy to watch whatever Dave can pick. Anything in mind? Nah, you can pick Sal and just, you know. Uh, okay, I see. He wandered over and picked something seemingly at random before returning and opening a bag of chips. The moment the movie started, we seemed to pick up in spirits. Roswell seemed attentive, as was Sal, but my mind was still wandering. Um, Dean let Dave down, I think. Like, Dean and Dave did the date, and Dean sort of just was like, all right, they, 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 let's just get give a little kiss. We do that, and he's like, see, none happened. And then he goes about his day. Whereas in this one, we just straight up broke his heart. The moment the... Yeah, I already read that. I kept finding myself looking across to Roswell, remembering what he told me the day before and what was eventually going to happen with him. He was going to die soon. He was going to die and he was happily sitting there watching a movie without a care in the world. I wasn't sure if I was envious of his strength or concerned about how unfazed he was about it. Ah, shit. On top of that, the question Roswell posed me yesterday, what was I going to say? How did I feel? I could feel my eyes bulging as more and more I found myself staring at my friend. Dave, are you alright? Oh, I'm fine, really. You're not watching the movie. Should we change it to something else? Oh, did you want this bar of chocolate I have? Sorry, just thinking about something. I'm good now, though. We can pause it if you want to talk it out. No, I'm good, promise. Alright, Roswell, may I have the chocolate, please? Oh, sure. Sal is so polite. We're doing Dean's route next. Just so you know, we are doing his route next. The movie continued and I still felt myself sneaking glances. The other two seemed aware though, occasionally meeting my gaze. But it wasn't long until we were facing the credits and Sal nodded slowly. That was fun. Thank you. No problem. Let's like to wake up a bunch of reading and drawing. I'm just thankful that we did something, just the three of us. Admittedly, it was starting to get a little lonely with just everyone else in pairs. With Tyson, someone's always left out. Oh, I just assumed I was the one left out. Really? Well, you do wander an awful lot, Dave. Plus, any number of times you've decided to take a nap, leaving the rest of us able to pair up. Hopefully, we can find a time for everyone to get together to do something outside of a meal anyway. No, I got it. I gotta do it strategically. Because... The true ending is only possible in the Dean and Tyson route, which honestly, we probably should have done the Dean route first because we want to get the true ending with Tyson. And we're already going to be pushing it by having Dean be the third route. We're already pushing it. Just like, here's, here's my thought process on it. We did Orlando first. And it was Burnout. It was Burnout City. Then we... D then now we're, we're currently doing Roswell. Which, honestly... We're only doing Roswell because I love Ross... We're only doing Roswell now because I feel like I love Roswell to death. I feel like we should do Dean next. Because... It'll, it'll, I feel like it'll give us, like, a nice bit of a break from everything. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean, Damien? What do you mean? 
fuck. Just fuck. Afterwards, I was think after Dean, I was thinking like Sal or Hoss for their route because honestly, love them to death. They're a bunch of sillies. Bunch of sillies. And then ending off with Tyson. And I mean, I don't really want to do Tyson's route mul- I don't really want to do someone's route multiple times just to get the medals. I'll- I'll ask about it in the Password Discord server tonight. I'll ask about it in the Password Discord server because if so, then I'll be so pissed off. Hopefully we can find a time for everyone to get together to do something outside of a meal anyway. Sal got up and passed the open bag of chips he held to me, stretching. Again, okay, thank you. But now I should go and make sure Dean and Orlando are doing okay. You're welcome to come back and join us later if you want, Sal. We'll see. I appreciate the offer all the same, though. The faintest smile crossed his face before he wandered out of the room, leaving Roswell and myself alone. We sat there quietly for a bit before Roswell broke the silence, resting back into his beanbag as he looked at me. You're worried. Sort of. Maybe worried is the wrong word. You're more conflicted about what I told you yesterday. Well, yeah, what am I meant to do with that information? I'm sad, but also wondering what there is I can do, and it just sucks. Trust me. Trust me, I know. Would you be less happy if you only found out as it happened? At least this way we can make the most of what time is left. I guess. I'm also considering, like, the other thing, too. Hopefully I haven't been worrying too much about that. I didn't mean for you to give me an answer anytime soon. Just sooner rather than later would be nice. I nodded along slowly and mimicked how he was sitting, breathing out through my nose. Come on, what's really bothering you about it? I don't know, just... Maybe I need time. Maybe I wish I could just magically fix it. Deep breath, Steve. Just relax. One thing at a time. What would you like to happen in an ideal situation? Loaded question, but, um, I suppose an ideal situation would be that I get to experience the few things I've yet to within the restraints of being on the mountain. Not immediately, like, being cured? That's complicated. After a while, you have to accept that an 11th hour miracle isn't going to happen so you can properly appreciate what you have left. But isn't that like giving up hope? Things could still work out. Dave, please stop. I accepted my fate a long time ago, and while unfortunate, I'm okay with it. Don't you get it, Roswell? You're dying. You're going to die. Once again, I'll remind you, Dave. Everyone dies eventually. I don't want to do both true endings. I only want to do Tyson's true ending. And I'm trying to figure shit out in my head at the same time. I'm trying to work out a game plan. Once again, I'll remind you, Dave, everyone dies eventually. All I could do was stare, eyes wide at what he was telling me. It wasn't anything new, but it was hitting me just as hard as the first time. So to be more specific in my answer, I think what I really like is to know what a relationship is like, good or bad, to have yet another experience under my belt. Good or bad? Right. Well, obviously having a loving partner is nice. Doing so out of obligation won't cut it. Heartbreak is a part of life after all. What about sex? Um. Uh, sex is fine, I suppose. I've never had it at this point. I could take it or leave it. If it happens, it happens. So when you asked me yesterday if I'd be your boyfriend, that's why? Like I said way back when we were sitting outside, I do love you, but I'm just not sure exactly in what way. Romantic, platonic, I'm not quite sure. You've put me in a real difficult position, Roswell. I know, and for what it's worth, I'm sorry. Roswell got up, dusted himself off, and looked me over carefully. Can I ask you a favor? What's the favor? I want you to go think about things for a bit, solo. I'm resolved on telling everyone about my time left tomorrow, so everyone's on the same page, so sorry you have to wear that burden alone for the extra day. I got up, jittering and not really sure what to think, but maybe that was the point of what Roswell was asking of me. But I think you need some serious time to process what's got you worried about all this. Remember, I'm the one dying, and I'm okay, all things considered. I'm okay. But... Slumping, I nodded my head and buried my hands in my pockets. Please? Okay. In a daze, I wandered off, not even knowing where my feet were taking me as I just thought things through. I was on auto, walking about the mansion until I took stock of where I was, looking around in the dark and letting my eyes adjust. The library? Looking over to the vault door, I felt a chill run down my spine, but all the same, I found myself wandering closer. 
As my hand brushed the surface of the door, it groaned. Startled, I quickly stepped back with my breath catching in my throat. Stepping through the door was Oswin, each step forward making me take one back. Do I want to know why you're in here, boy? Oswin? Yes. What? What are you doing here? He wandered over to the table where we'd had our first in-person conversation and leaned against the table, looking me over in the darkness. I believe I asked you first. Right, I'm thinking mostly I don't even know why I ended up here, if I'm being honest. He grunted, gesturing to the seat that I'd taken during our first conversation, taking his in turn. I just... Can I ask you something? I sat down and he quirked a brow, not giving me any indication that I couldn't ask. What do you do when someone tells you they're dying? Must have happened to you at some point, right? He stiffened and drummed his fingers on the table between us. It's never easy. But what do you do? Can I take a wild guess and assume we're talking about Roswell? I- Yeah, how'd you know? More so I'm pleased I didn't go revealing a secret prematurely, but I've known for a while. Did he tell you? Dave, I do believe you've forgotten what I used to do for a career. So you knew because of that. Given what I was working on, I was approached by his mother to question if there was anything that could be done, anything at all. But there wasn't. Sadly, no. With my medical license revoked, I could hardly go walking into a hospital and administer tests myself either. But what Roswell has is, unfortunately, untreatable now. He is going to die. Honestly, same, Amethyst. I could honestly go for that now. Hmm. My left hand is cold. It was hard to hear from someone other than him, and I could feel my eyes bulge and face go numb of feeling. What do I do now? My friend is going to die. How do I... What do I... I imagine he's told you, and then his delivery left a little to be desired. He was so calm! Who says things like that? He's... I don't understand. He's turned 18 this year, I believe. So it makes it 13, 14 years that he's known? That young? But that would mean... He was a child when he was told, yes. It's a wonder that he's lived this long, but regrettably he's very much out of time. But that's horrible! Would you rather he'd have been lied to? At what point is it more cruel to hide his lack of future from him as opposed to placing this burden on a child? So his parents, they... Every effort was to was made to ensuring he was comfortable. That the flow of information was dictating, was dictated by whatever his curious mind wished to know, even being so young. I can't believe it, that's just so unfair. There was that word again, and I caught the faintest smirk on Oswin's face. Hiya! Welcome. Hang on. Yep. Hi, a new person. Ah. Hi, uh. Ah. There was that word again, and I caught the faintest smirk on Oswin's face. That is, unfortunately, life. But I imagine that this isn't all that comforting to you. Of course it is! He could have said something sooner! We could have done so many other things and made better use of the time! But wouldn't that fly in the face of his wishes? What do you mean? To live a normal life. That's what he wanted, wasn't it? I just don't understand! How can someone be so willing to die? Because everyone dies eventually, Dave. Roswell has just had over a decade to come to peace with the fact his life is significantly shorter. I slouched in my chair and pouted. Even now, I don't understand how to process what I was feeling. Between feeling overwhelmed and helpless, I slowly brought my gaze up to Oswin. Let me ask you this. Are you his friend? Of course! Do you care about him? Obviously! Then I fail to see why this is an issue for you. You are not the one dying. He is. Given the circumstances, I understand why you'd expect Roswell to be distraught, but I'm sorry to say that all this is long past. So what am I meant to do? Entirely up to you, but I would imagine the correct answer would be to be his friend. But I'm doing that already! Are you really? 
I sat up and then continued my upward motions while standing. How dare you? Of course, nothing's going to change how I feel about Roswell. Nothing, huh? Well, that's good news. So I suppose an hour conversation is over. After all, the only thing left is to be there for him, isn't it? I... Let me be frank. If you're looking for what you meant to be feel what you're meant to be feeling or what you're meant to be doing about all this the only one that can answer that is yourself he rose from his chair as well hands in his pockets it's a sad event so be sad cry if you wish but the more you bring up that you don't understand the more taxing it's going to be in its final moments he wandered over and put a hand on my shoulder do you understand or do i need to go over it again no i get it good if you're still struggling with this go speak to roswell again speak your mind but be tactful rich coming from me but i'm hardly a paragon of virtue am i thanks i guess now if you don't mind i have some reading i need to do things to look up and i'd much rather do that without the audience you can take the door there there down to the basement he punched something into the door and opened it up gesturing through it good luck i followed the passage beyond the door letting my hand on the wall guide me forward until i emerged into the basement then from there i stepped back up into the foyer you look a bit rattled, Dave. What's going on? Have you seen Roswell? Sure, why? Just wanted to talk to him about something. Last I saw, he was outside, just laying on the grass. Looked a little out of it. Did he say anything? I asked, but he didn't give me anything to work with. Just said he was waiting. Huh. Okay. Now, have you seen Orlando anywhere? Not for a while. Last I heard, he was talking with Dean about something before Sal left to go sort it out. Great, alright, I'll go see what's going on too. Everyone else is accounted for. Even Tyson? Yeah, he's around being a sour puss, so I'm giving him some space. Okay, well, good luck finding Orlando. And you're with Ross, although he's just out front. Won't be hard to find. With the wave, he wandered towards the backyard and out of sight, whereas I went to the front in search of Roswell. Roswell, you out here? There he was, splayed out on the grass, looking as happy as could be. Welcome back, Dave. Uh, what are you doing? Waiting. For what? Not what, who? I assumed you'd be back sooner than later, rather than later. You never were the one to want to leave someone something alone for too long, after all. This is important, I had to think quickly. Sure you did. Come join me on the grass. I did as he said, wandering over and laying down next to him. Looking up at the sky, everything was starting to roll in. And the soft blues of the sky were transitioning through warm pinks and oranges as the sun set. So, how was thinking? Tiring. I can only imagine. Roswell, can I be honest about something? Sure. What's on your mind? I have no idea how to feel or react to knowing that you'll be gone soon. Well, yes, I gathered that. It's more than that, though. I'm scared, ashamed, nervous, angry. Roswell sat up slowly, looking down at me visibly confused. I think you might have the cycle of grief covered if maybe a little out of order. Normally you face through them rather than just have them all at once, you know. I'm sorry, not just about that, but... I'm sorry that you're going through this. I don't know what it's like, but it seems horrible. It's not the best, no. I've been a bad friend, haven't I? Not as bad as you think, Dave. You just care and don't know how best to handle this particular bit of news is all. And there's nothing I can do? Nope. Nothing you can do either? Aside of just waiting, nope. Okay. Ross will lay back down looking up at the sky when I glanced across to him. I know it's not the best situation, but I promise I'm okay. Okay. You're starting to sound unconvincing, Dave. Sorry, I'm just sad. It's a sad event, so it's okay to be sad. Also, that other thing you asked me yesterday, um... Right, have you come to a decision? Can I ask something first? Of course! No, you said you wanted to experience it, even if it's fleeting, but what's going to happen to me if I say yes? You live! You be happy, even when I'm gone, hopefully. Just because I'll be gone doesn't mean life stops. I thought you'd have learned that by now. He sat up, crossing his legs and stretching out as I did the same. Okay, that's... Yeah, okay. Even I struggled to make sense of it, Roswell was still smiling. For some reason, he was... He really was fine with all this. I was being true to how I was feeling. I wasn't fine with this at all. I wasn't fine knowing that Roswell was going to be gone, slipping through my fingers before things could even really begin. Roswell, I... Yes? I... Yes. Yes? Yes. My answer is yes. Ah. <laughs> it's only going to be for a brief while, but... For what it's worth, I'd be happy to take what moments I can get. I'm glad you think so. Roswell, I'm scared, though. When it happens, I... Dave, it's alright. When it happens, we'll tackle it together. Cry, be sad. Don't forget to keep loving others the same way that you would have loved me. Who says I don't love you already? That would be nice, but are you sure? 
I don't know, but with what time we have left, I'd like to find out. You're silly, Dave. He took my hands in his only briefly, letting one of them leave to wipe his eyes. Emotional damage! <laughs> I love you, Dave. He had a goofy smile. I had a goofy smile on my face and my cheeks started to burn. It was a nice feeling that was coming from in my chest, but I didn't know where to really place it. So what happens now? Nothing needs to happen if you don't want it to. Are you hungry? I think I filled up on snacks during the movie, so I'm probably fine for a bit. Alright. Why? Are you asking me to dinner on a date? Well, we could probably go watch another movie with something sweet. I'm sure we could find something. My boyfriend knows me so well. Is that what I am? Your boyfriend? Sorry, was that not what you were agreeing to? I just assumed... No, I mean... Yes, I mean... This is going to be a little bit too adjust to us all. This is all... New. We don't have to call it that yet if you don't want to. Honestly, just basking in this feeling is really nice. So what did you want to do now? Are you asking me because you had something in mind? Not at all, I'm just wondering. Honestly, I didn't think this far ahead. If we had just watched a movie, I would say we should go do that. We can't watch more movies? We can, that is, if you want to. Might be nice to cuddle up and find something easy to watch to let the evening go by. We both got to our feet and Roswell lingered a little behind. I waited for him by the door and he wandered up ahead of me as I looked out over the lawn. We're gonna leave off here tonight. I wanna leave off on good vibes. Good feelings. I wanna leave off on good feelings. I want to leave off on good feelings and awkward feelings. Good vibes only. I have a pair of shorts that say good vibes. So good vibes only. If not, I'll... Bitch smack Oswin or some shit. I don't fucking know yet. We have to take what good vibes we can get. That's how it is with Echo. Anyways, stay safe. Have a good night. And I will see you all tomorrow.